Welcome back everybody. Today I'm gonna start putting the Civic back together. Um, it's another really cold day. About as cold as when I started on this. Uh, wind chill is nine degrees Fahrenheit. So I've got the heater going. It's nice and toasty in here. I'm gonna start putting this thing back together, but uh, the first thing I need to do, and I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video, is fix the top two transmission bolt holes in the engine block. So just like I was mentioning in the previous video, uh, I'm pretty sure the technician at Honda put this back together using his impact wrench. Um, I think the torque spec for these is somewhere around 50 foot pounds. So that's really easy to exceed with an impact wrench. And these bolt holes are aluminum. So they're pretty easy to strip out with a steel bolt that you're putting in. So I'm gonna be repairing them using a time cert kit. If you guys don't know what these are, they're basically, in my opinion, a superior helicoil type repair. Except you're putting in a really strong insert um, in this case they're steel so they're going to be stronger than the OEM threads because the OEM threads are aluminum so yeah you get one of these kits I got mine on Amazon you can get them all over the place just google search you know the size you need in this case m12 by 125 and you get one of these kits this one's for a drain plug repair, which means it comes with this extra little uh, stopper thing, so you don't go too deep, I believe. But um, yeah, the, the basic kit comes with the drill bit to bore out the hole and make it bigger for the inserts. The tap to tap the threads, the outside um, diameter threads on these inserts and this little counter boring kit I'm sorry a counter boring tool to make the little stepped lip so they sit flush otherwise they would just keep going in but anyway uh, most of these kits come with a couple time certs this is the thread the uh, drain plug repair thread time cert. I got these um, 24 millimeter long, uh, 24 millimeter deep time certs because the bolt goes in quite a ways into the engine block. So I'll be using this kit to repair the top two holes and um, I'll show you how to do it here in just a second. So what you want to do to get started on your thread repair mission is measure the depth of the hole and this is going to be hard to get on camera with one hand but uh so get your caliper in there i'm gonna use the end of it there you go bottomed out we're looking at 40 millimeters and that's how deep you want to go with the oversizing um, drill bit and in most cases, it's pretty critical that you measure the depth. Like on the Senja block, I don't want to go any deeper just in case there's, you know, maybe a water jacket behind it or an oil galley, um, some other applications that you might be repairing threads on um, might not be as critical, but something like this, you want to look out for that because you could uh, end up having a bad time very quickly. So what I'm going to do is measure my um, drill bit and put a piece of tape on it so I know not to go any deeper than that. So I'm gonna do that here in a moment. Okay, so I have 40 millimeters measured out on my drill bit. I'm gonna go ahead and place a piece of tape. About right there, so I don't go any deeper than that. Um, my time certs are only 24 millimeters 
deep anyway. So uh, I'm just using the drill bit to make sure there's no messed up threads behind this. Um, but like I said, it's steel, so it's gonna be a stronger repair anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this drill bit chucked up and um, oversize these holes. Okay guys, here we go. I'm just gonna double check and make sure that this drill's going in straight. It's about right. Okay, ideally you're going to want to use a better drill. Okay, that one's good to go. This one looks like it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get to, but I think we'll get it. Oh yeah. That's it. How do they look, guys? Good? I can't see. From here, they look pretty good. Okay, next step is to use the counter boring tool to put a nice step in there real quick. And after that, we'll move on to tapping. Go ahead and do this one first real quick. Again, guys, make sure you're square in there. It doesn't take much to counter bore those. So what I like to do is to check it, just flip the time set around with a little flared edge, put them in there, and look at that. It goes right in just below the surface. So you're good to go. Uh, next, we're gonna be tapping it. Okay, so before you go, tapping any holes, uh, take some compressed air and blow out the holes to get all the chunks and chips of aluminum out and any other debris that might be in there. And I'm going to go outside for a minute because that was a lot of clutch dust that I just uh, stirred up in the air, so I don't want to breathe that. I'll be right back. All right, the next step is, like I said, to tap the holes. Uh, this is the setup I'm going to use because of uh, how hard it is to reach these holes. Uh, I took the tap and I took the handle off. It's got the 3 8 drive on the back of it. Pull a little extension in there, and I'm going to use a ratchet to uh, cut, the, cut the threads. Uh, two things that are critical, like before, just make sure you're going in there square, and um, also use some oil on the tap. I'm just going to use this air tool uh, conditioner, but you can use any kind of oil, motor oil, three-in-one, 
anything to keep the tap lubricated. So let's go ahead and tap some holes. Square as you can go. Hardest part is getting it started. Okay, well, it probably doesn't look square on camera, but it is very square from my point of view. So I'm just going to drive this in basically until it stops. If it starts to get tough, back it up to clear the chips, use some compressed air if you need to, but uh, going into aluminum is pretty easy. Okay, well that turned out pretty well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one real quick. Uh, I'm gonna clear off my tap. It's got uh, quite a lot of uh, chips on it, so I'll be right back. This one's going to be a little bit easier, but uh, hopefully I don't screw myself saying that. Yeah, this annoying harness is annoying. Okay, same as before, blow out the holes, get them all cleaned out. Okay, I don't know if I mentioned this when I opened the time cert toolbox, uh, but the next step is to use this um, installation tool. So basically it's got the inside threads of the time cert on it. And you're gonna go ahead and you put some oil on this. It recommends that you put oil on this, on the inside basically. So you're gonna get this started on there. I'm gonna put some oil on this. On the outside threads, you're gonna use some thread locker. So that's just gonna be some extra insurance that this is going to stay in there. The other method that this time cert uses to stay in the hole that you threaded is the bottom of this time cert is going to bow out a little bit once you run this installation tool all the way through here. So with a thread locker and this mechanical bond on the bottom of the time cert, it's very unlikely that it's going to come out. I've never seen one come out before. Anyways, let's, uh, let's get these things installed. And one more thing, guys, clean these holes out with brake cleaner or some kind of solvent that uh, will clean it out and dry it out. I did that off camera just so you get a better bond with the uh, thread locker. So like I said, get a little bit of oil on the installation tool, not on the outside threads of the time cert, and then go ahead and Put a little bit of thread locker.
helps when you open the bottle. That's a generous amount, but that's okay. And let's put this thing in. Just taking a peek down here to make sure it went in flush. It's not poking out of the bore. Looks good. You're gonna run this thing all the way in. Feel some slight resistance when it pops the bottom of that thing open and go a little bit further. Start backing it out. And when you back it out, the time start should stay in and not pull out. One down, one more to go. Okay guys, this looks good. Get a close up of the uh, repaired hole here. Look at that. So that's ready to accept the stock bolt. And it's gonna thread in there nicely. As long as you, uh, follow the torque specs, <laughs> which I can't stress enough, guys. When you're putting bolts into aluminum threads like this, this is a transmission bolt. They're steel. If you ram these in here with your impact wrench and you keep going, it's going to start pulling these threads right out of the block. You know, and if you're putting this transmission on and you don't ever plan on it coming off again, and I guess that's not a problem, but you know, the clutch is always going to wear out sooner or later. So like when I went to take these out, they got jammed in there and took me a lot, a long time to get them out with my impact wrench, which is fine when you're removing them. But when I put these um, bolts back in, I'm going to follow the torque specs so I don't strip them out. That way, if we ever have to service this again, they'll come out easily. So I'm going to make the thread repair portion of this uh, clutch reinstallation a separate video. Just so if anybody that's looking to repair some threads with some time certs can refer to this without having to, you know, go through the rest of the installation of the clutch. Um, but yeah, that's about it. You can get these kits, like I said, on Amazon. That's where I got mine. Um, it was easy because it's, you know, two-day shipping. Um, but... You can get them, I think you can get them on McMaster Car and a couple other websites. Just do a Google search um, for the size you need. You know, research what the um, thread is of the hole that you're trying to repair. And uh, just Google the size of the thread you need, followed by the word time cert. And it should be pretty easy to find one of these kits. Um, and also Amazon carries the uh, bags of different length time certs. So that's what I went with for these holes. It uh, It's not as deep as the original hole. I don't think they sell 40 millimeter deep time certs, but this being steel should be stronger with less threads anyway. So anyway, 
that'll wrap this video up and uh, I'll continue on to installing the clutch and flywheel, which I just got, brand new throw bearing. And uh, we'll see you on that video. Thanks.